Hi guys, Niall here and welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we are going to talk about how we can quickly and easy model Revit skirting profiles uh, for skirting boards within rooms. Um, equally, this is applicable to architraves around doors and windows if you do not want to have them as part of the doors and windows families themselves. Or it can also be used for coving. So let's say if you have a coving around your ceiling to wall intersection or if you want to you know those kind of classical mold profiles around the ceilings that you might see in a lot of georgian and victorian buildings this is also um, very useful in situations like clean room environments where you may have floor to wall and wall to ceiling coving profiles that are actually part of one or the other system so for example you may have a mipilam floor finish or epoxy floor finish that then has a painted profile that rides up the wall to a certain height um, to make sure that there is an easy cleanable uh, intersection between the two junctions. So I'm very quickly going to show you how this is done. Um, so there's a number of ways of doing this. Uh, a lot of people like to use the architecture and then they go into the, the wall uh, sweep or reveal profiles. Um, wall sweeps can be problematic if you have multiple rooms that, let's say, go down the length of a corridor and the corridor wall itself is part of each of those rooms it's one continuous wall and it can be quite difficult to have a good intersection between the skirting or the coving profiles at the intersection let's say if this wall continues sorry apologies if this wall continues past that point it's very difficult to get a nice clean intersection between the two so i'm going to show you my preferred way of doing this and the preferred way in my opinion is to use a model in place family component uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually make sure that we have a profile within the Revit model for our skirting board. Um, you can do this in two ways. First of all, you may have a unique profile that you need to generate from scratch, in which case you go into the Revit button at the top, you go into your new dialogue and go to family. Then you go into your family profiles and you generate the profile relative to the insertion point. In this instance, though, we already have a known, uh, this is a very kind of typical small dwelling shape let's say so we know that we can get away with a standard skirting board so we're going to go into our <clears throat> excuse me we're going to go into our insert dialogue we're going to load family and we're going to scroll down so i'm in the uk metric here you may be us metric or you may be south african or belgium or it depends um so this will vary per install and depending on where you're from but under uk metric you can go into your profiles you can then go down to second fix carpentry and then you can find your skirting dialogue here okay and as you can see, we have multiple profiles here that we can use. So in this instance, I want to use the profiles torus. Okay, and I'm going to press open. Now that's inserted the torus profile into my project browser. So if I go on the right hand side, I can go into my family breakdown here, go down to profiles, and you will see that you'll see profiles torus and all the variables of that profile. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually create the profile itself and, and sorry, create the the sweep itself for the profile to follow. So we go back to our architectural tab and under component is a drop down for model in place. Now we don't actually have a breakdown that would suit floor skirting board um, on this breakdown here. So when in doubt, I use generic models. So I'm going to use a generic model family in this. I'm going to press OK. So in this instance, we're going to call it skirting, or skirting eight. And we get this dialogue here okay so because it's a sweep because it, the shape of this is going across multiple axes we actually want to use a sweep here okay if we're using an extrusion we'd only be able to extrude it down one axis and um, so we want something that will follow basically where we generate the lines across multiple axes so we're going to use a sweep so when we select the sweep dialogue here there's two selections okay we can pick path or we can sketch path the pick path is very good but there's one issue with it, and that is that where you have breaks, like we have the door here, if that door was to be relocated, the edge of the profile that we've created would not follow the door relocation. So although it will follow the walls, if the walls were relocated, it will not follow the door opening. So what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to use sketch path. And in the sketch path dialog here, we could either draw it, but we're actually going to select pick lines. Before we do that, however, we want to make sure that we're working on the correct plane. So we're going to go into our set work plane here. And we know that this upper level here is set to level zero. So we have ground floor set to level zero. Now you may have something like a raised access floor. 
in which case you may wish to actually pick a plane and what you can do there is you can simply pick the plane and it'll open the dialogue and you can select the top of the floor surface however we don't want to do this in this instance we want to actually set it to level zero and press ok then using the pick lines dialog we're actually going to pick the surfaces that we want and we want the intersection between our wall and our slab okay so if we select the inside face of the wall because we have picked the plane down here it's actually going to assign it to the junction between the wall and the ground floor so if we select that wall there you can see that it actually picks the intersection between the plane that we selected and the wall face that we've selected so the one thing that we want to make sure that we do as we're doing this is that we always lock the selection after we've created it and this means that if this wall was to move or to change construction uh, build up let's say so let's say the width was to change from 215 to 400 this intersection will move as well and that means that our profile will move to suit the new shape so we want to pin that we want to lock that there okay similarly we want to select this here and when the lock comes up we want to press it and then we're going to come back around and do the same here now as you can see we're actually crossing two of the door openings and this is no good to us because obviously we don't want the skirting board to carry across the door face because you know we break people's necks <laughs> so what we're going to do actually is we're going to align so if we press al we can pick the door frame edge or the architrave depending on which it is okay and then we can pick the very end point of the line that we want to join to that point and once we've done that you'll see it snap back to the alignment point and then similarly we'll use the lock and that means that if this edge moves with the door then our skirting board will automatically regenerate to suit the new shape of the wall between the corner and the door frame similarly we're going to do the same over here so we're still in our al or our line dialog we're going to tab until we get our selected plane and then we're going to press the edge and we're going to lock it so now you can see we have our profile and it's carrying around two three of the walls okay and it's stopping at the doors so next thing we want to do actually is we want to make sure that we've selected our um various properties here so we have subcategories here and we can give it all these various subcategories if we wish but that's not applicable to any of them solid void it is a solid so we leave it as a solid and um, you may want to create an in place void family and that's a, a different criteria for what we need here and then our material type so you can see we've got cherry selected here but we can go down and you know i can select any given wood type for example and we can say you know i'm going to stick with cherry <laughs> okay and we're going to press okay so now that we've assigned that criteria and we can finish creating our sketch path so when we finish that then we're left with our reference point for the profile so where our profile is going to be placed so you can see this is the x y axis of the profile and the insertion point and then you can see the path that it's going to follow so in this instance now what we actually need to do is make sure that under our various um dialogues here sorry we need to select our profile so we go into our select profile here and you can either select the profile from the top here or on the properties dialog here so i'm going to scroll down to our torus and we're going to select torus 146 okay and i'm going to finish now as you can see there's a problem here straight away the insertion point for our family profile for the profile family is actually has the x y axis going into the depth of the wall now this is not something that we need to go back to the family and necessarily edit what we can actually do is merely go into this dialog here in the properties and select flip this profile and as you can see now that completes that profile there let me finish model okay now let's hope it all worked because we've pinned the profile against the wall intersection with the floor and because we have aligned the edge of the profile to the door we should be able to stretch this wall out here and as you can see our skirting board has followed suit and we should be able to move our door and similarly our skirting profile has followed suit this means that our skirting board is now acting in a parametric manner with the rest of the the, the geometry and the only instance that we'll actually have to edit this now is if 
we actually have to introduce another opening that will cut this again okay but for the most part if all we're doing is generally changing the shape or the door sizes or the wall sizes and locations then this is going to remain with this is going to follow suit with any design alteration that we have so i'm just going to undo the alterations to the room and i'm going to go through the process once more just to compound it with you on how this is created so we go to our architecture dialog under component we have a drop down for model in place we then scroll down to our generic models family press ok we're going to call it skirting b and um, typically because you may have multiple doors in every room i like to label them historically by room name and then skirting board skirting a through you know d if needs be depending on how many openings you have and that way you can actually schedule them according to room and get your 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 linear meterage meterage if you need it okay so then once we're in this dialogue again we're going to select our sweep we're going to make sure that our plane is set to level zero which is where we want it and then on our modify sweep we're going to sketch path we're going to pick our lines and we're going to pick our walls and lock to the inside face of the wall then we're going to press al for a line we're going to select the edge of the door frame that we want this to stop at we select the endpoint and then we lock the endpoint to that alignment and similarly we'll do it on this side and we lock we still have the same criteria as we set in the previous one so unless you change that criteria will remain consistent we can press ok and then on our profiles we need to navigate down to match the previous profile so we press our 146 and as we know the insertion point is going into the depth of the wall we want to say profile is flipped and we press finish and then we can finish our model and now we have our second one and similarly as the first one it'll update and change so that is a very straightforward way on how we can create our skirting board runs our ceiling to ceiling to wall coving profiles our molding profiles our architraves around doors and windows if we don't want to include them in the family and then kind of things like clean room covings and that kind of thing so i hope you found this useful and um, if you have any questions about this please let me know if you would like me to run through why this is more effective than creating a wall sweep for a similar circumstance i can actually set that up for you as well and show you and um any other comments and questions that you'd like please let me know so as always like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more content like this thanks a million guys and i'll see you again bye bye